Hello everyone, my name is Apoor and welcome to the Product Life. Uh, today we have Bolin with us. Uh, so thank you so much Bolin for joining us. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you could introduce yourself to the listeners. Great, thanks for having me on. My name is Berlin Houghton. I'm the owner and founder of The Table Tyke. Uh, we are the only placemat with a, a table edge bumper. So that's what sets us apart. So how did you uh, come to such a unique idea? Like, uh, how, why did you have this idea that table mats should have a table edge bumper? Sure. Yeah. So it all started at lunch one day. I was there. I was at lunch with my mom and my six month old son. And, you know, part of being a parent is just trying to make life as easy as possible. And so my mom and I are sitting at lunch with my son and he kept just hitting his mouth on the, on the table edge or, you know, just kind of teething. Everything goes in their mouth. And when you're at a restaurant, it's just a little bit gross to have that table edge in their mouth. <laughs> um, so, you know, my mom and I were constantly putting our arm across the table edge, you know, to keep his mouth protected. And I kind of found that this became the new norm at restaurants. And so it just led me to think, gosh, you know, I need to buy a placemat that I can take on the go that has a table edge bumper. And I couldn't find one. And that's literally what started the process. So. Got it. And uh, don't restaurants already have such a table mat or any alternatives for this, such as baby chairs and so on and so forth? Right. So great question. So they don't actually. Um, so if you're eating out at a restaurant, um, you typically, you know, when your kids are really little, the restaurant has a high chair that they supply, but the high chair you pull right up to the table that the adults use as well. And so when they're really little, like that six month to kind of like nine, 10 months, they're still kind of learning to sit up. They're not totally stable yet. And so they kind of just fall by habit of, you know, not being totally strong yet. And so that results in them hitting their mouth on the table edge. And then also um, the, just, just the case of pulling that high chair up to the edge of the table, when they're teething, literally everything goes in their mouth. And so by habit, they, you know, put their mouth forward and they put that um, table edge in their mouth. And I'm not even a germaphobe, but I just always kind of thought that was gross. Um, and so to answer your question, no, uh, restaurants really don't provide any type of protection across the table edge um, for babies. And they don't really have placemats that they hand out either. Um, so, yeah, so that that's what sort of sort of started the journey was trying to solve that problem. Got it. Could you show us your product? Yeah, of course. So this is the table tyke. So you can see here we have our table edge bumper. Try to get a little closer. Yeah. Right. And so this is the front of it. It hooks over the table. And then we also have raised edges here. So what you'll find is when they're really little, the bumper is great for when they hit their mouth um, or just, you know, with their teething. But the table type actually grows with them. So as your kids get into the, you know, two, three, four-year-old phase and they're starting to use open cups on their own, not the sippy cup, and they spill, the bumper, because it's raised plus the raised edges, will actually keep their laps dry too. So it's something you can start to use as they get older as well. It grows with them. And then the little loops are, we designed it so that you can roll it up and hook it closed. It fits in diaper bags, strollers. My son is four. He just carries it in the restaurant now. Um, so yeah. And then the last thing I'll say is it's also great just kind of, you know, as your children grow and they start to do more activities like Play-Doh and Kinetic Sand, it's also just a great table mat too, because the mess stays here, pick it up, toss it in the sink, and then your table's clean and it's protected from all the fun. So lots of uses. Got it. I really like the hooks, but one of the reviews on Amazon actually mentioned that uh, the hooks uh, are not as durable as they would have hoped. So uh, I would like to know, like, how durable is the mat? Uh, yeah. How long is the average life? Yeah. So, you know, I saw that review and my heart was like, oh, darn. I have not had anybody return the mat because of the hooks, right? So I've had my mats for, we launched October, 2020. We still use the same mat that we even had like as our sample production. So, I mean, over time, the the loops could wear, but quite frankly, we haven't had that. So I thought to myself, gosh, I wish I could just reach out to that customer and replace it. Um, but you'll see, I mean, they're they're pretty like I'm I'm pulling it. I'm like really pulling it and it's not 
It's not moving. And like I said, we've had this mat for over two years. Bring it to restaurants. My kids use it. They play with it. And you can see it's still there. So I think they just unfortunately got a bad seed. But I'm happy to return it if they reach out to me <laughs> or replace it. I know that's it looks very durable. And I really like that you have them in multiple colors. So I was just curious which yeah. color sells the most. So our top seller is the gray. Slate gray is what we call it. And then our second top seller is the hunter green. Got yeah. It. So those are the two. Mm -hmm. I was thinking okay. pink might sell more or the purple because I really like those colors, but I guess gray is gender neutral and. Yeah. You know, when we first launched, um, my first two colors were cherry red. It's a bright like pop of red and then Caribbean blue, which is kind of like an homage to, I grew up in Venice beach and I just love the ocean and Caribbean blue is, is a great seller. Um, but what's so interesting is gray exactly to your point which is a more muted tone sells by far the best. So I, I go for the bright, fun colors, but you know, the gray tones are in right now. So there you go. Got it. So how did you launch this product? You mentioned that you launched them in October, 2020 during the uh -huh. lockdown. Yep. How did you actually launch them? How did you design them? Yeah. So, um, I, you know, this is all very new to me. So I had never launched a product before. My background is all like corporate America, to totally different than the table tech. So this is really a new space for me. Um, I had the idea in my head. Um, I just needed someone to help me finesse it. So how was the bumper going to work? How big do the loops need to be? Those sorts of things. So um, I researched research and design companies. I uh, found a company that I really liked and they sort of helped me finesse the idea. And then from there, through a mutual friend who has her own company, they have tons of phenomenal products called Big B, Little B, and she has silicone products. I knew this needed to be a silicone product. Um, she put me in touch with my manufacturer and that's really how it started. The research and design company, she introduced me to the manufacturer. I sent over the CAD drawings and that was it. And, uh, once we had our first samples in, we really just launched, um, we had a website that we put up and my sister's friend helped me. I'm not tech savvy at all. I was like, who can help me with this? And it was really just a grassroots effort the first year, like, you know, just through word of mouth. And then, um, we had a local news station pick up, um, a story on the table type from a TikTok that went viral. And that TikTok led to like, it was like hundreds of orders overnight. We'd never seen anything like that. So the new station picked us up. Um, and then from there, that kind of just got the ball rolling. We finally, you know, made the leap to get on Amazon. And that was, you know, that was huge for our business. Um, but that's really how it all started was just um, grassroots effort and then getting lucky with the TikTok. So there you go. <laughs> wow, that's really impressive. And uh, so what are your plans for the future? Are you coming up with new product innovations, new lines, or are you expanding to more outlets such yeah. as Costco or Walmart? Yeah, so we uh, started working with retailers, boutique retailers last year. I wanted to really make sure that we were at a place um, that we were ready for when the big ret retailers reached out to us. So we started with the boutiques and that's been great. We've been really busy with that side of the business. Um, this year, in the next month or two, we're launching um, a another product, which I'm really excited about. We've actually had people asking us for this product for over a year and I just... I was just trying to get this business, you know, like at a place where I was, you know, comfortable. Um, and then, yeah, we've got some other products in the future we're looking at launching. But right now for 2023, we definitely have this one in the pipeline for the next month or two. Got it. Wow. So you're keeping it a suspense for us? A little bit of suspense. I haven't quite decided how we're going to launch it, to be honest, like what the big reveal will be. So um, I think once I figure that out, um, I'll be able to share more. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'd be looking forward to that product. Thank you so much, for These are all the questions that I had. And thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It was great, great having you.